Hey there, Philos here. This video is going to be on the patch 2.4.1 PTR and the recent changes to the Demon Hunter specifically. So here's the actual patch notes and you can see the changes, companion, the boar, they made it to where it's a group buff, so you're going to add the all resistance and the life regen to the whole party, so increasing the defensive utility of the boar companion, and then we have the wolf companion damage is now multiplicative. So in the past the wolf was just additive damage increased by skills and it's now its own multiplier. That's going to make the wolf quite a bit better in terms of the damage potential. And then also we have steady aim being multiplicative as well. So these two changes are going to be just good damage increase bonus to those two abilities. Steady aim is going to become a top tier damage passive in the past. The only reason steady aim wasn't good is because of the fact that it was additive and it scaled poorly with other multipliers. So now it's a, it's a also multiplicative, making it much better. Here we have some of the general item changes. Legendary potions can be salvaged. Pain of the Powerful was reworked. So it's going to reduce the damage taken as well as increase the damage to elites with the secondary bonus at rank 25 and again changing the additive to multiplicative damage so with the changes to Tegek as well which we'll get to in a second this is going to kind of in my opinion become the go-to third gem for most demon hunter builds instead of Tegek we're going to run Bane of the Powerful now Enforcer also multiplier now so that's going to be potentially useful for Marauder type builds we got the Gem of Toxin, reducing the damage, so you get the 10% damage increase as well as the 10% damage reduction. We got the Gorok of Swiftness. And the main change to this is they just added in dodge. In addition to cooldown and attack speed, you're going to get dodge chance. Teardrop, increased damage, not really a big deal here for the Demon Hunter Moratorium. Chance to stagger increased a little bit. Pain Enhancer also increased a little bit, nothing too significant here. Simplicity Strength being a multiplier, potentially useful in certain situations. Tegak, this is the one being redesigned, only works with channeling skills now. Max stacks of 10, so a little bit easier to use the gem, but less builds able to take advantage of it. Wreath of Lightning, damage increase. Standard stuff. Zay Stone of Vengeance, a little bit of a damage buff. Depth Diggers are multipliers. Oculus Ring works with the Follower more often now. Selenium got nerfed. Frostburn Mage Fist changes. So the big ones to note here on this tab are going to be the Beta Powerful Enforcer, Ogok, and the Tagak changes. Nothing else really super significant there. Scrolling down, we have the Demon Hunter specific changes. Marauder, damage increase. They're just kind of buffing the numbers up here. Greenstone's fan, damage increase. Again, just increasing the numbers, making the builds a little bit stronger. Meticulous Bolts was reworked to give each elemental arrow a different buff. The ball lightning gets to slow speed. Frost arrow, immolation, and nether tentacles just get damage increase. That's kind of cool, making those a little bit more viable. Uh, Natalia's Vengeance, damage increased a little bit here. On Hollowed Essence, damage was doubled. Shadow Mantle, damage was doubled. So the Shadow Mantle got a huge buff. On Hollowed got a huge buff. Natalia's slight buff. Now the Rapid Fire Weapon got buffed. Probably still useless. So that's all of the listed changes currently for patch 2.4.1 for the Demon Hunter and some of the legendary gems. Um, I will link in the description to these patch notes here, so you can check out the full list if you're interested in other classes and stuff. I'm going to just focus on the Demon Hunter here. Um, there are some other changes, some bounties and rifts and set dungeon changes. Uh, you can kind of glance over that. The big thing to note here is the incoming damage has been reduced, so it's a lot easier to survive in the higher level greater rifts opening up room for more damage potential in your setups.
And now I'm just going to quickly glance over this build. It was around in the last PTR, and it did get nerfed in the past PTR, so I want to go ahead and preface this by saying this build is PTR and will probably get nerfed. Um, if you guys remember from the last PTR, there is a hybrid build taking advantage of the two-piece shadow set, as well as the four-piece marauder. And for whatever reason, they changed the two-piece shadow back to what it was, so it increases all of your damage. I don't know if this was unintentional. It seems like, based on the last PTR, they would have seen this coming. They would have... it's like... Obviously, if you're going to change this two-piece to increase all of your damage, then you're going to open up the hybrid build potential here. So... Again, I don't know if this is an oversight on Blizzard's end, or if this was intended. It seems kind of silly for them to have just overlooked this, considering it was explicitly nerfed last patch, last PTR. This was one of the top builds for a long time in the first like week or two of the last PTR. And here we are again, with this build being probably 5 to 10 greater if stronger than every other build that the Demon Hunter has. So, with that said, I do expect this to get nerfed. I'm not going to do like a whole build guide on the setup. I am going to briefly kind of talk about the setup here and explain what I'm doing, just so that if you want to get on the PTR and have fun with this while it's around, you can. But again, big, big red flag. This is almost certainly going to get nerfed. So, what we have is the Marauder 4-piece, makes your Sentry Steel increase damage with these abilities, and then you have the Shadow 2-piece, which is going to increase all of your damage when you have a melee weapon equipped. So with these two set bonuses combined, you're able to take advantage of the Sword of the Ill Will in your hand, which is a melee weapon, so it's going to give you that 2-piece Shadow bonus, and it's giving a Chakram damage modifier as well, so it's going to benefit in here with the four piece marauder. So it doesn't matter what four pieces of marauder you use, what two pieces of shadow, the itemization is going to be flexible on that end. Um, the key components to the build are going to be the Zoe's Secret, Bombardier's Rucksack, Wraps of Clarity, and then as I mentioned the Sword of the Ill Will, Focus and Restraint, Hellfire Amulet. I mean it's pretty standard setup with that addition of the four-piece Marauder, two-piece Shadow, in a Marauder build. So, we do have the Dawn in the cube, to give the cooldown reduction to give you 100% Vengeance. Cloak of the Garwolf as well in the cube for the damage reduction through the Zoe's Belt. And then the Convention of Elements for the damage increase. So that's the cubes and the itemization. Um, now I'm going to talk about the legendary gems. Like I mentioned earlier, instead of Taeguk, we're now running Bane of the Powerful. It's a nice hybrid gem. It's going to give you some damage as well as some damage reduction. That's really nice. Bane of the Trap, standard damage gem. And then Zay's Stone of Vengeance, also a standard damage gem. Now we can look at the skills and abilities. Um, the generator here, I'm using Bitter Pill. It hardly makes a difference which one you use here because you are using a melee weapon. You only have the two options of the Bola and the Grenade. And with permanent seeds, the hatred isn't really an issue because Chakram costs so cheap. Your hatred generation is so high. You don't really need the generator for the hatred. So we're using it here for the utility of the bonus discipline. Um, you could potentially drop this, run like an endless walk combination, get an extra ring, potentially that could be good. Um, but yeah, so the generator there is just kind of whatever. Razor disc, chakram, this is basically the only option for the spender because of the flight path of the razor disc and the range with the marauder sentries. It's just the best, there's no real alternative there. And that has to do with the range and the flight path on the Razor Disc. Next up we have Tumble for the mobility. Standard. Vengeance with Seethe for the hatred and damage increase. Companion is Unruned because we do have the Marauder 2-piece. Which is going to give you all of the active and passives of all of the companions. So it doesn't matter what rune you select there. 
Sentry with Polar Station, standard here for the Call of the Week, Bane of the Trap. Proc, passives, we got Custom Engineering for the additional Sentry, Call of the Week for the damage, Awareness for the Cheat Death, Steady Aim for the damage as well, and on the Necklace I'm running Blood Vengeance again for the damage, because we're using the Sword of the Ill Will, we're going to gain damage from Hatred. And quick mention in the Paragon, I do have Hatred spec again, to get the damage from the Sword of the Ill Will. Movement speed from the Ferrets, to get the 10% up to 25, you got 15 here, and then the rest in Dexterity. The rest of the Paragons are standard, cooldown reduction to get your 100% Vengeance, with a Quiver, crit damage is usually stronger, and then crit chance, and then attack speed. Here is bottom to top, skipping life regen, and then here, area damage and resource reduction, depending on your hatred equ equilibrium, you could skip the resource reduction, go for area damage first, but either way you're going to get these pretty early, so. That is the setup that I'm currently running, and I just kind of, with a really, really gimpy type setup, just the bare minimum foundation loot, I was able to do an 87 in 9 minutes, and this rift was exceptionally bad. I have some footage of the clear, I'll kind of have in the background so you can see the gameplay a little bit. Uh, it's The gameplay is basically the same as it always has been, it's just much stronger with this hybrid setup. And if you look at the hero details, you can see here what I had. Um, quick mention, the chakram damage on the helm and the boots is going to be extremely strong with this setup because of all the damage modifiers present and all of the changes to the additive damage being multiplicative now, specifically steady aim, the fact that we don't have take up. All of these things combined are increasing the value of these Chakram damage modifiers, and that's the reason why I'm running Chakram on the helmet instead of Vitality. In the past, in most builds, I would run Vitality over the damage on the helmet, but this one you're actually getting close to the full value from that damage modifier, so it's going to be very strong. Um, other than that, like I said, I mean it's a pretty standard Marauder setup. Nothing crazy going on. And my gear is pretty poorly optimized. I mean, it's reasonably well rolled. I do have some augments. Some items are not augmented. And, I mean, my gems are only level 80. My enchants are like level 60. Some of my items are not even augmented. So, I do have a 76 on the quiver. But yeah, I mean, most of my items are not augmented. I am almost, you know, 1500 paragon, so... I do have close to 16,000 dexterity, but I could easily fit another 5,000 or so in there just from having fully optimized gear, a little bit higher paragon. That's it for this video. I am just going to let this play out so you guys can see the gameplay here. This is Greater Rift 87. It's like first or second try. With the setup, again, it is very strong, and I do expect it to get nerfed, so if you want to log in and have some fun with it, gotta do that sooner rather than later. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.